Okay, let's use the aggregate demand and aggregate supply framework to analyze the effects on the economy of a shock. Um, say, uh, in this case, we have multiple shocks, so we have a shock to the aggregate supply, so that the uh, there's some price shock, perhaps, uh, the aggregate supply curve shifts shifts up, and we also have at the same time a, a shift uh, in aggregate demand, a decrease in aggregate demand, and increasing pessimism in the economy. So aggregate supply shifts back, aggregate demand shifts back. This is a bad situation overall for the economy. So the economy shifts from uh, the initial equilibrium uh, down to a much lower equilibrium here uh, with uh, roughly the same rate of inflation, but m much lower GDP, so Y falls by a lot. So what's going to happen in this economy over time? Well, since uh, GDP is below potential, we assume we started at potential, uh, we know then the change is going to be that uh, inflation is going to fall. Uh, the output gap is negative, and so inflation starts falling. When inflation starts falling, um, uh, because uh, expectations of inflation start falling, we represent that by a shift out of the aggregate supply curve. As inflation falls, the central bank then can, through its monetary policy rule, be lowering the real rate of interest. Uh, so aggregate demand, we move along the aggregate demand curve, investment rises, net exports rise, consumption spending rises. As long as GDP is below the output gap, which now we would be right here, uh, Inflation continues to fall, and so our aggregate supply curve continues to shift to the right until finally we get uh, back to our uh, level of, uh, well, I, I didn't draw it quite right, back to our initial level of potential GDP. So that's the self-correcting mechanism that's embodied in the aggregate demand, aggregate supply framework. Uh, now, it's important to note that uh, we could take... Uh, policy actions to try to correct for um, the uh, shock to the economy. But those policy actions, let's go to the next page, those policy actions uh, involve uh, shifting the uh, aggregate supply, aggregate, uh, sorry, the aggregate demand curve through expansionary government spending or through uh, expansionary monetary policy. And we have, uh, remember, we have our shift in the aggregate demand curve and our shift in the aggregate supply curve. So now if we try to respond to the downturn by sh increasing uh, aggregate demand, either through fiscal policy or through monetary policy, uh, the effects of that, right, is that our aggregate demand curve shifts out this way. But notice that our aggregate supply curve has shifted. So there's we can come back with a big enough increase in aggregate demand. We can we can come back to uh, to potential GDP, but at a cost. The cost is that inflation will be uh, higher as a result of this uh, uh, of this policy response. Inflation will be permanently higher, um, and if inflation is higher, we have a higher real rate of interest. So, the if a higher real rate of interest, that means that our um, our policy actions are effectively crowding out uh, investment, and and that's the only way to get the economy to return quickly to uh, potential output, uh, rather than the through the slower and more painful self-correcting mechanism. So that's a quick uh, summary of some of the ways that uh, we can use aggregate demand, aggregate supply diagram to illustrate some of the major. Um, issues confronting any uh, contemporary economy.